الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أبدع الأفلاق والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على من كان نبيا وآدم بين الماء والطين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عدد ما في علم الله صلاة دائمة بدوام ملك الله مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح الله اللهم اجعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا القرآن الحكيم ربنا زدنا علما اللهم اجعلنا من الواصلين إلى العين دون السامعين للأثر أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم حاضرين كرام تدي we would just like to touch on the topic on the subject of ar-raja which is hope and this is a weapon that the muslims possess hope because without hope then we are lost without hope then we are better off dead, ma'ad Allah. And this is the essence of Iman also too. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Imanu bayna al-Kawfi wal-Raja That true faith, true Iman lies between fear and hope. Every night in the Witr Salat, in the dua, the masnoon dua in witr salat, we tell Allah, wa narju rahmataka. We hope for your rahmat to Allah. Wa naksha adhabaka, and we fear your adhab. Every night in witr, we say, wa narju rahmataka. We hope for your rahmat, and we fear your adhab. Wa naksha adhabaka. My dear brothers and sisters, as I said before, hope is something which is a big ni'mat, a big favor. It is a great weapon for us, for the believers, that we hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we do not lose hope. With the passage of time, with the vicissitudes of time, the ups and downs of time, sometimes things go good, sometimes things go bad, the stress, the tension, the difficulties, anxieties, grief, worries, sadness, difficult circumstances, sometimes a narrow life, a straightened life. We face problems from time to time because this dunya is not free of fear nor sadness. In the Akhirat, La Qawfun Alayhim. Allah says there will be no fear upon them, nor will they ever grieve and be sad. But when we are in this dunya, sometimes we'll be faced with khawf, with fear, and sometimes we'll be sad. But the important thing is not to lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not to become so frustrated or to despair or lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And this is what we have to cling on to. 
other people who are without guidance, who are not on haq, who are not on as-siratul mustaqim, the straight path, when things do not go in their favor, and when big difficulties come, sometimes they commit suicide, and they think it is an end to their problems. A mu'min, a mu'mina, a believing brother and sister, as believers, we should never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should say like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal, and praise be to Allah upon every condition. Wa'udhu billahi min hali ahlin nar. And I seek refuge in Allah from the hal and the condition of the hellfire. No matter, no matter how sinful a person may be, no matter how wicked, evil a person may be, no matter how many wrongs we may have committed, yet still we must understand that Allah's name is Ar-Rahman and Allah is Ar-Rahim. And we say that every day in our salah, five times a day we say, Alhamdulillah, that all praise is for Allah, Rabbil Alameen, because He is Rabb, the Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Who is Ar-Rahman? Who is very merciful, the beneficent, most gracious. Ar-Rahim. And who is merciful? We go back to an incident. It is the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the golden age of the sabiqun, al-awwalun, the time of the muhajirun and the ansar. The golden days where in wherein the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam resided with his companions in Medina. In that time we go back. The battle of Uhud is over. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions suffered heavy losses and casualties in the battle of Uhud. His uncle, subhanallah, Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was martyred and killed in this battle of Uhud. In Makkah, when Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu came into Islam and supported his nephew, Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muslims gained strength because a warrior like Hamza he was feared by all in the Arab land in Makkah. When Hamza embraced Islam, Muslims became strong. And Allah used Hamza and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah to strengthen the Muslims. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had great love for his uncle Hamza. But Hamza was martyred in Uhud by an Abyssinian slave known by Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu who later on became Muslim. Wahshi was promised a great reward because he was a great thrower of the javelin of the spear. And he took Hamza from behind, struck him with that spear. Hamza radiallahu ta'ala was martyred and he was killed by Wahshi. Wahshi later on wanted to communicate with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Hamza, when the spear was pierced into Hamza, it was through the pubic area, the pubic region, and it came out through the back. Hamza radi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, of course died. Such a powerful trust. Trusted into the pubic region and came out through the back by a powerful throw from Wahshi 
who caught him unawares. He did not even see him. Then Hamza, his, his inside was cut open by the wife of Abu Sufyan. And his liver, his heart, his organs were taken out from his body, chewed by Hamza. And his body was mutilated. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was very much grieved. Islam began to flourish. Islam began to grow. Wahshi wanted to communicate with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he says ibn Abbas that Wahshi the qatil, the slayer of Hamza radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wrote to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said in his letter Halli Halli min tawbatin is there any way out for me? Is there a chance for me to repent and gain Allah's forgiveness? I have committed great wrongs. Halli min tawbatin. Is there any tawbah for me? Any way of atonement? Any way of repentance for me? And he also wrote that he had heard that there may be a way out for him. But... Whereas, he wrote to the Rasul Islam that he had heard something of that. Wa anta taz'amu, whereas you are saying, anna man qatala, that the one who commits murder, the one who kills, or ashraka, or the one who commits shirk, ascribe partners unto Allah, or zana, or the one who commits adultery, zina, Yalqa athaman. He's going to meet a sin. He's going to get a sin. Yudhu'afulahu al adabu yawm al qiyamah. For which the azab and punishment will be multiplied on the day of qiyamah. Wa ana qad fa'altu thalika kullahu. And I have done all of that. I have killed. I have killed your blessed prophet. Uh, sorry. I have killed your blessed uncle Hamza. I have committed shirk. I have done zina. I have done the worst type of crimes. I have done all of that. It was on this occasion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse of the Holy Quran. Illa man amana wa amila saliha. Now that is so, yes, except for those people who will believe in Allah, believe in the attributes of Allah, and who will do righteous deeds. The verse came down, and this was this jawab and this response was sent to Wahshi. Wahshi replied and said, Hada shartun shadid. Oh, this is a difficult condition. Because for a person to be forgiven on the way out for tawbah, the verse came down, إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَأَمِلَ صَالِحًا Except those who will have iman and who will do righteous deeds, Wahshi replied, هَذَا شَرْتٌ shadid. This is a, a very difficult, hard condition. فَهَلْ غَيْرُ ذَلِكَ Is there something else other than that? Any other way? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it, this shows how merciful Allah is towards His creatures. For after all, He is Ar Rahman, He is Ar Rahim, He is Ar Hamur Rahimin, the most merciful of those who show mercy. Second ayat came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yagfiru ay yushraka bihi. Indeed, Allah will not forgive that partners be associated with Him. He will not forgive shirk at all. And Allah will forgive for 
anything else besides that for whomsoever he wants anything else. Wahshi replied, La Adri, I do not know. Hal yagfiruli amla, would Allah forgive me or not? I don't know. I have committed great sins. I don't know if I'll be forgiven. La Adri, hal yagfiruli amla, would He forgive me or not? I don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the third verse of the Holy Quran concerning Wahshi. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse of Quran which is in Surah to Zumar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, Qul, say, say unto them, O Prophet, Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim O my servants, who have committed israf, who have done great wrongs to the people, and who have wronged their souls in a great way, who have committed extremities, asrafu ala anfusihim, who have committed extremities against themselves by committing zulm and wrongs, say, O oh my servants, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Revelation came down. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. O my servants. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has termed it. Ya ibadi. He has still called them his slaves and his servants. Alladheena asrafu ala anfusim Who have committed great wrongs against themselves. By doing dhulm to mankind and doing wrong things. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. La tayasu min rahmatillah. Do not lose hope. If you lose hope, you have nothing again. Keep the flame of hope alive. Keep it burning. Inna Allah yagfiru dhunuba jamia. Indeed, Allah forgives all of the sins. Yagfiru dhunuba jamia. He forgives the sins entirely, all of the sins. Whatever it may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive those sins. And as, as long as a person turns away from shirk, as once, that, once a person makes tawbah from shirk and does not ascribe any partner, no associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he is one and does not like partners to be ascribed and associated with him. Inna Allah yagfiru dhunuba jamia. Indeed, He, Allah, is Al Ghafur. He is the one who likes to forgive. He forgives plenty. He is the great forgiven one, most forgiven. And He is Ar Rahim, most merciful, very merciful. Ayat came down. Then Wahshi's response was Naam. Hada. Naam, hada. Yes, this. This is it. This is it. This is what I was looking for. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to turn to His creatures. We run away from Him. We turn away from Him. We get frustrated. We lose hope. Wahshi wrote letter to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hallim in tawbatin. Is there a way out for me? Is there any way of tawbah and repentance for me? He wrote that I have heard something like that. But you, O Muhammad, you are saying that Anna man katala, the one who has committed murder, the one who kills, and I had indeed killed your uncle. O Ashraka, the one who commits shirk. O Zana, or the one who commits adultery. Yalqa Athaman is going to meet a sin. He will get a sin. For which the azab will be multiplied on the day of Qiyamah. I have done all of that. Look how merciful, look how Allah wants to reach us. That we may understand how merciful Allah is. 
that Allah's love and Allah's mercy is 70 times greater than a mother's love for her son and her child. Look at Allah's response. Ayat came down. Yes, that is so. But you know what is the condition? Illa man amana wa amila. Except those who have iman and who will do righteous deeds now. And wahshi still. He said, Hada shartun shadid. This is a great condition. This is a great condition. It's very difficult. La akadiru alayhi. I do not have ability over that. Imagine that. Wahshi says, La akdiru alayhi. I do not have ability. I don't know if I could do that. Fahal gayru dhalika. Something else besides that? Is there anything else? Allah send down another verse. Inna Allah la yagfiru wa yushraka bihi. Allah will not forgive shirk. That partners be associated and ascribe unto him. Wa yagfiru ma duna dhalika. You forgive anything else. Lima yasha for whomsoever he wants. And what she said, La adri, still I don't know. Hal yagfiru li amla. I don't know if Allah is going to forgive me or not. The wrongs that I have done, I still don't know. Third verse revealed concerning Wahshi was this verse. Kul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusim. Say, O my servants, who have done great wrongs upon themselves and committed great zulm, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Innahu, inna Allah yagfiru dhunuba jamia. Allah forgives sins. All of them entirely. Innahu huwa al ghafoorur rahim. Allah is al ghafoor, oft forgiven, very forgiven. He is al rahim. He is most merciful. Bashi then replied, Naam hada. Yes, this. Yes, this. This was the ayat. Fajaa fa aslama. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he embraced Islam. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Wahshi that it is better if you do not sit in front of me. It is better if I don't see your face. Because when I see you, I remember Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, my uncle who was killed by you and mutilated, the prince of the martyrs. And when I do that, it will cause me some discomfort. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like my being discomforted by anyone so for you it is better for you that is why we should not try to incur the wrath or the anger of our elders and our mashaykh because it doesn't bring barakat so he asked wahshi if he could absent himself from in front of him but wahshi was admitted into islam he embraced islam this is a tafsir from qatib mulak hasan an extract extracted from the tafsir of Al Khatib. The author of At Tafsir al Kabir has mentioned that Hada Amun fi Hakil Musrifin. This ayat is not only for Wahshi, but this ayat is general and inclusive of all those who have committed Israf, extremities, who has been extravagant in their affairs. This ayat is also for them. This ayat is a consolation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all sins and do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah continues, وَأَنِيبُوا ila rabbikum And turn to your Rabb. أَنِيبُوا ila rabbikum Yani irji'u ila rabbikum Return to your Rabb. Where have you been? You have been lost. Come back. Come back to your Rabb. Come back to his Rahmat. Come back to his mercy. Wa aslimu lahu and submit yourselves to him. Surrender to him. Yani aklisu al amala lahu. Do your deeds sincerely for Allah. Turn to Allah. You have been in dhalalat, in misguidance, in error. This news is good news. Wa anibu ila rabbikum. Return to your Rabb. Come back to him. Wa aslimu lahu. Submit and surrender to him. Perform your deeds sincerely. Aklisu lahu al-amal. Min kabli ayyatiyakumul adhab. 
before the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should descend and come to you. ثُمَّ لَا تُنصَرُونَ Because then at that time you will not be helped. You would not be helped by the prevention of Allah's azab from coming to you. وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And follow the goodness of that which Allah has revealed unto you. Follow the Qur'an. Listen to the Qur'an. Do ittiba of the Qur'an. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ بَغْتَةً Before the adab, before some calamity should come to you. بَغْتَةً Unawares. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ While you are not knowing and aware, unknowingly, unawares, when you, while you were not knowing of the time that it will come to you, that is before it came to you, you were not knowing of that time, you were not aware of that time, you were not knowing it, turn towards Allah before such an azab should come. قَبْ لَا يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ بَغْتَةً unawares. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ In such a state and how that you are not aware before the coming of the azab of the time in which it will come. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. So therefore, بَادِرُوا بَادِرُوا إِلَيْهِ Hasten and turn towards Allah for now is the time. We do not have yesterday. We do not have the past. For yesterday is dead and gone. We do not have tomorrow because tomorrow is out of sight. We have now. We have now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, hasten towards Him. In other words, before antakula nafsun, before a soul has to say, Ya hasrata ala ma farratu fi jambillah. That, oh my misery, oh my sadness, oh my nadamat, oh my hasrat. Upon the negligence, upon those things that I have neglected, fi jambillah, fi ta'atillah, in the obedience of Allah, before that has to happen, before too late, too late shall be the cry, badiru ilayhi, hasten towards Allah. Wa in kuntu, before the time comes, when a person has to regret and say, ya hasrata, O my sadness, O my misery, alama farratu fi jambilla, over that which I have neglected in the obedience of Allah. Wa in kuntu lamin al sahirin. And indeed, I was amongst those who used to ridicule, ridicule the deen of Islam. I was amongst those who used to ridicule the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before Allah's azab should come, bagtat and unaware, wa antum la tashurun, in such a state and hal that you are not aware of the time, before it comes, turn towards Allah. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is what we have. What we have is hope. Allah says, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Which one of us can be worse than wahshi? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the tawbah of wahshi. He committed Sins, great sins, Allah accepted him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept us also too. And remember, the best things that we can hope for are those deeds, those good deeds that will bring us reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah mentions in the Holy Quran, Allah says, Al malu wal banoon, that wealth, wealth and children, wealth and family, wealth and sons. Zinatul Hayat dunya they are the glitter, the beauty, the attraction of this earthly life. Wal baqiyatul salihat. Allah says, whereas Al Baqiyatul Salihat, the everlasting good deeds, Kairun Inda Rabbi Kathawaba are better with your Lord as a thawab, wa kairun amala and better as an amal, better as something to hope for. The everlasting good deeds. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Baqiyatu salihat. The everlasting good deeds are subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. In another commentary, everlasting good deeds, as-salawatul qams, the five daily prayers. In another commentary, the everlasting good deeds is any amali salih whose reward 
will be kept for you, will be stored in the akhirat. And that is something that we should hope for to meet that on the day of Qiyamah. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.